<laughs> it's a it's a race. That's that's fine. I think we'll move on to item eight D then, Miss Anderson. Will item eight D is flight training reduction incentive test programs, and you have six requests to speak. Martin's with the auditor. We are uh, seeking the uh, Public Works Director to come up because we're running a little bit ahead of schedule uh, oh. on the agenda. Uh, and so... How dare we? Here we are. There he is. Gentlemen, excellent timing. <laughs> Take, take, take a minute, catch your breath. Everyone's you. been racing in here. Good evening, Madam Mayor, members of the Council. Presented for you this evening, in response to community concerns regarding the volume of aircraft conducting flight training operations in the local traffic pattern around SMO, city staff looked into opportunities to reduce the volume of local flight operations on weekends and holidays. The proposed voluntary flight training reduction incentive six-month test program is designed to reimburse flight schools who conduct repetitive takeoff and landings at other area airports on weekends and holidays. The design of the program calls for the reimbursement of $150 per eligible flight, which would result in one takeoff and one landing at Santa Monica Airport, while repetitive operations occurring at other airports other than Santa Monica. It is estimated that the test program would reduce the number of local operations during the test period. If approved this evening, the incentive program would begin on July 1st, of this year and terminate on December 31st of, the, of this year. The program outline, only flight schools located at Santa Monica Airport would be eligible to participate in the program. The program is limited to dual flight instructions, repetitive takeoff and landing training flights conducted at other airports. So those student flights are not eligible at this time. A qualified flight instructor must be an employee of an eligible flight school. A minimum of four takeoffs and four landings must be conducted at other airports to qualify for the $150 per flight reimbursement. And the reimbursements really cover the cost of traveling to and from another airport. The reimbursement process, authorized flight instructor must complete and sign a Santa Monica Airport Flight Training Reduction Program Reimbursement Request, which is co-signed by the student pilot. They must include a photocopy of the student's official flight logbook. This is a required FAA document whose falsification is the basis for suspending or revoking an, their air certificate, rating, or license for the fair air, federal air regulations. The logbook entry will contain the appropriate entry with date and time of the flight, route of the flight, airport utilized, number of takeoffs and landings conducted at the airport, a minimum of four takeoffs and four landings as indicated would be the minimum amount that would meet the eligibility requirements. The logbook entry must contain the signature of the certified flight instructor. Reimbursements will be made on a lump sum basis once per month. Our verification protocols include airport staff will utilize various data sources in an attempt to monitor and verify compliance with the program. These will include our review of the logbook entries and the reimbursement submittals. In addition, we'll use um, some of the various tools that we have in our inventory, such as the web track program to verify the date and time of the departure and the arrival of the aircraft. CyberTech, which will verify date and time of any radio transmissions, and our vector airport solutions, which can also verify the date and time of the departure through the photographic display that we use for our landing fee program. The other program elements contained in this include the uh, prohibit advertising or promoting the flight training reduction incentive program so that, that any of the operators at the airport flight school operators cannot use this in any of their promotions, cannot use it in any internet search, cannot use it in any means or methodology to promote their, their flight training programs. In addition, the penalties for fraudulent reimbursement requests include potential misdemeanor prosecution under the San Ma Santa Monica Municipal Code um, regarding direct orders of the airport director, and submittal of a complaint to the FAA is a violation for, for their possible federal air regulations regarding the falsification of their logbooks. In conclusion, staff has proposed this test program as a means of reducing repetitive flight operations during weekends and holidays. It is a test program limited, limited for a six-month period. The program can be terminated, terminated at any time upon providing 10-day notification to the local flight schools. If authorized to move forward, staff will return to the City Council with the results of the program and further recommendations if warranted and if it is determined to be effective in reducing the number of repetitive operations. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Do we have any questions before we hear the public comment? 
Mr. McEwen? Might I ask how the amount of the subsidy was arrived at? Because I've received correspondence suggesting that because student pilots have to fly certain distances as part of their qualifications, that we might inadvertently be subsidizing the flight school for something that they would be getting paid for anyway. Two answers to that one. The amount of reimbursement was determined based upon the cost of the uh, aircraft rental and flight structure time, because remember this is a dual operation. So the estimated hourly amount was uh, between 230 and 250 per hour. And then we multiplied that by the amount of time that we thought it would take to get some of the local area airports. Some of the airports, it's a lesser than 150 round trip. Some of them are longer than 150 round trip reimbursement. So we looked at a middle ground that we thought would provide for the greater amount of flexibility for those operations to occur. And in regards to the um, second question, which was, this will be subsidized in operations that already occurred. As part of their long distance flight training program, they're required to fly 50 nautical miles from the airport in order to, to be considered for their long, long um, distance or cross country flight programs. So 50 nautical miles is certainly outside the boundary of what uh, would cover any re reimbursement costs here. They'd be certainly expending more dollars in gas to do that. I, I would just like to add that uh, flying the additional mileage doesn't get you the reimbursement. Unless there are at least four repetitive operations, there is no reimbursement. Dr. Holbrook? Have you heard from any airports that uh, are pro or con? For example, uh, I received a few emails personally. I didn't get one from Hawthorne, so I suppose Hawthorne's good with this. We have not received anything from Hawthorne. We had an inquiry from the city of Torrance asking if we had designated specific airports, and we indicated we did not. Mm -hmm. We had an inquiry from the county of Ventura, which I believe the, the council has also copied on the letter. Mm -hmm. um, and we also received uh, further uh, email correspondence from the uh, city of Camarillo, which is also one of the signatories to the letter from the county of Ventura. Um, other than those inquiries, those are the only ones that we've received. Thank you. All right, we'll go to the public comment. Uh, Denise Barton, Martin Rubin, Marianne Brown. Good evening. How interesting it is that this idea went from practicing taking off and landing every day to only on weekends and holidays at a cost to the taxpayers of $90,000. I mean, if this was a test project for 180 day, two days or six months, the cost would be about $495 a day. But with it being only on weekends and holidays, that cost jumps to $2,000 for about 45 days. My first question would be, is the cost of city staff included in the $90,000 estimate? Next, even at $2,000, would that be enough to split between the flight schools to cover the cost of fuel to go to another airport and to pay whatever landing fees they might be subject to at another airport? Also, if the flight schools are not taking off or landing at Santa Monica Airport, who is to say that that will eliminate any takeoffs or landings? Because if flight schools are not using the runways, the runways are open for additional, additional air traffic in and out of Santa Monica Airport. I personally see this action as you putting a band-aid on a gushing wound, and once again I have to ask if you can even do this or the FAA might have a problem with it. It could also be seen as you once again trying to pacify a group of the public on an issue during an election year. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Barton, uh, Martin Rubin, Marianne Brown, and Zena Josephs. Good evening. Martin Rubin, Director of Concern Residents Against Airport Pollution. Um, our attorney, Mitchell Tsai, submitted a letter today, which you have in your packet, that basically uh, brings forth issues that deal with the California Environmental Quality Act and the failure of the city to uh, make a determination whether this incentive program is subject to CEQA. Um, you could, it's too much to read in two minutes. So I, I do want to bring up that these exact flights, weekends and holidays, are prohibited under the uh, Santa Monica Municipal Code and um, the flight schools have circumvented the intent 
of this regulation through the use of the taxi back maneuver, clearly disregarding the will of the city of Santa Monica. Rather than offer compensation to flight school operators to perform weekend federal holiday pattern flights at other airports, the city should let the flight schools know that by disregarding the intent of the Santa Monica Municipal Code regulations, flight schools have proven to be untrustworthy. Therefore, upon expiration of their present lease agreements, flight schools should no longer be able to base their operations at Santa Monica Airport. Thank you, Mr. Rubin. Mary Ann Brown. Good evening, City Council and um, City Manager. Um, Mary Ann Brown, resident of Santa Monica. Um, with due respect, I think this proposal um, appears to me to set an unwise and possibly unethical precedent. Um, I see the proposal paying an award to a commercial operation to not do something which is odious to many residents, affected residents. They're primarily not located in Santa Monica, the residents. They're in Venice and in Mar Vista. That's where the flight schools are Im impacting people most. Um, that um, they are repetitively taking off and landing um, why is this recommended? And um, since this is a problem seven days a week, why is there only partial relief? Also, um, I think um, this, this seems analogous to cities that give incentives and tax breaks to um, commercial ventures such as Walmart to locate in their cities. Um, and yet later, when there's been assessment, often uh, these uh, commercial ventures have not given back to the city in an equitable way. Often they've left the city once uh, they have uh, been established in the city when they originally promised living wage jobs. Um, also with respect to the cost, um, I don't think the cost of uh, the time for Santa Monica staff, airport staff, to monitor has been factored in at all. Um, and it um, raises a bigger question about why we do not have a thorough cost-benefit analysis of the airport. What are the positive financial things that our city is getting from the airport, and what are the costs to both uh, tangible and intangible to our city? Great. Thank uh, you very much, Ms. Brown. Zena Josephs, uh, Bill Koontz, and Jerry Rubin. Thank you. Uh, the Board of Friends of Sunset Park uh, did not take a position on this at our June 14th meeting because we thought the proposal would be discussed in more detail at the June 25th Airport Commission meeting, uh, which was subsequently canceled. Uh, speaking only for myself, a reduction of takeoffs over Sunset Park on weekends and holidays does sound appealing, and especially when my house felt like it was being buzzed last night at 1.06 a.m. Um, in the report, it says, at the end of the test period, staff will analyze the results of the program and report back to the city council on the effectiveness of the program in reducing local flights. So uh, one question we have is what the criteria, sta what criteria staff will use in analyzing the results of the program. Um, there is... There has been some resentment expressed about the city subsidizing the flight schools, um, especially um, after the group on ads, which caused a lot of irritation and aggravation, uh, you know, trying to entice untrained pilots to do steep turns over Santa Monica Pier and other areas. Uh, also, I'd like to thank the staff for exploring the concept of the exhaust silencers, and uh, we look forward to hearing more about that. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Joseph. Bill Koontz, Jerry Rubin, and Michael Brodsky. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. My name is Bill Koontz. I'm the first vice chair of the Mar Vista Community Council and the president of the Northwest L Neighborhood Association just to the east of the airport. National, Sentinella, and both of the freeways. That's the area I represent to Los Angeles. Um, Thank you very much for listening to us and uh, tackling this difficult issue. Uh, I know not all of the noise is yours, a lot of it is ours, um, and, and we thank you for uh, taking a look at this.
what we have here is um, the letter of the law and the intent of the law. So the letter of the law, which is um, section 10.14.14.90 of the Santa Monica Municipal Code, outlaws touch and goes and taxi back maneuvers. It does not outlaw taxi backs, uh, which is what is, uh, I'm sorry, <clears throat> not taxi backs, uh, touch and goes and stop and goes. It does not outlaw uh, taxi backs. So the letter of the law is very clear. There's a loophole. The intent of the law is noise abatement. So let's go back to the 1984 agreement after which this municipal code is based. Section 25, pattern flying restrictions. The parties recognize that the city has established prohibition on touch and go and stop and go operations at the airport after sunset. Sorry, I'm reading quickly because I have a two minute. Um, <clears throat> before 7 a.m. on Monday through Friday as well as all day on Saturday, Sunday, and legal holidays. This restriction is expected to remain in effect pending the results of the noise abatement study described in section 19. The parties agree that the pattern flying restriction described above may be modified by the city after consultation with the FAA following the completion and based on the results of the noise abatement study. There is nothing from keeping you from dropping in a two or three word amendment to the San Monica Municipal Code that includes taxi backs or possibly even a time restriction within a 20 minute, 30 minute period to close the loophole. Um, in fact, when you talk to the um, well, actually, this whole st situation stinks as bad as those developers putting in pony walls, uh, and you might as well pay them you, ninety Mr. grand Coons. to uh, to put up pony walls. Thank you, okay. Mr. Coons, if, if okay. I may. Question: um, I've looked at the taxi back thing, and and mm -hmm. you you read very quickly. Sorry. After consultation <laughs> with the FAA. We yes. may modify. You realize that consultation with the FAA has been the crux of the matter for a long time. Have, has anything? They're not easy to with consult FAA? with. Oh. Okay. <laughs> oh no, I don't yeah, understand. We've been, we've been, I've, been, I've been here, and these guys have seen me here for years and years. I go to every uh, commission meeting, mm -hmm. but uh, I'd, I'd rather, in an election year, tell my constituents that I saved one hundred eighty thousand dollars of the city's money rather than threw it down the black hole mm -hmm. of, a, of a fiscal uh, airport. So, thank you. Thank you, sir. Jerry Rubin and uh, Michael Brodsky. Uh, thank you very, very much, uh, Mayor Pro Tem Davis, City Council members, Jerry Rubin. Well, first of all, I'm glad that it was taken off the consent calendar, bought here, but I think it deserves much more discussion and debate. So I seriously recommend not moving forward tonight, at the very least. I think the Airport Commission should have a chance to fully address it. I think most of the people in Santa Monica have a serious problem with the flight schools. The debate is, should we pay them to leave? <laughs> and I don't think it's a good idea. And I do think it's a bad precedent. Maybe some minimum relocation fee, but some ongoing thing, this seems pretty inappropriate. They're unsafe. The pollution is a daily thing. And this is just not the airport to do flight trainings. If the other airports uh, want them there, there needs to be an adequate time to get them to be able to get another job there, if you will. But I don't think we should take up the full subsidizing of that endeavor. So I urge you to take more time to think about it and bring the airport commission into it and the public into it more because it's a very serious decision that's going to affect as we head to 2015. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rubin. Michael Brodsky? Thank you. I'm Michael Brodsky. I'm a resident of Sunset Park. Um, just to clarify, the language says in cons consultation with the FAA. It does not say in agreement with the FAA. It does not say the FAA has to agree with us. It just says consultation. And we should definitely do that. The City of Santa Monica already has a law that specifically prohibits touch and go and stop and go landings and takeoffs at the Santa Monica Airport. The intent of the law is clear, and then it prohibits repetitive flying on weekends in order to reduce air pollution, reduce noise pollution, reduce the dangers of student pilots practicing very dangerous maneuvers over residential neighborhoods when families are most likely to be at home on weekends. The penalties are prescribed for those who violate the law. 
Unfortunately, flight schools and pilots have found an unintended loophole in the language where they now land, taxi back in line, take off again and repeat and repeat and repeat all day long in order to subvert the intent of the law. They now want to be paid to comply with the law, and to me that sounds like extortion. What we should do is simply close the loophole in order to enforce the existing code true meaning and intent. Specify that taxi backs are prohibited and put a five-hour time limit on pilots and planes, thereby ending repetitive flights, and simply enforce the law. Find the violators rather than pay the violators. Thank you. Thank you, sir. All right, that concludes the public hearing. Mr. McEwen? The irony here is that the very same people who tonight stood before us and asked us not to do this program or to delay this program are the people who have for years convinced me that these flight schools are not just a noise issue, but that the noise is a health issue and that these student flights over our neighborhoods are a safety issue. And I can't postpone a safety act out of concern that we should have more debate about it or concern that we're somehow paying people who we shouldn't be paying. I want residents both in Santa Monica and in Venice and Mar Vista to be safe. And yeah, we're not going to do it seven days a week. Where it's a pilot program. We're trying to figure out whether this has an impact. Uh, I understand people's misgivings about this, but believe me, we have explored these other possibilities. The, the change of the law on taxi back and, and what it would take to negotiate that with the FAA is somewhat beyond my pay grade, so I'd like to turn to the city attorney and perhaps get an explanation of why it is that we're going this course instead of trying to change that law as we go into the 2015 agreement no negotiations. You mean rather than trying to add taxi backs to the right. prohibition? Or enforce the law which doesn't say taxi backs. Well, f first of all, the, the, F the FAA's view is that if it doesn't say taxi backs, it doesn't mean taxi backs. They consider taxi backs, touch and goes, and stop and goes to be three very different kinds of operations. They consider any limitation on all three of them to be an access restriction, and so they consider it to be a grant, grant condition violation. Um, and so it is certain that if we were to simply add taxi, the words taxi back to that ordinance, it, it is certain that the FAA would take us to task um, on that. The, this question's come up repeatedly, and I certainly understand why, because staff is very aware of airport neighbors' concerns about, about noise. This question's come up before. A few months ago, I shared information about an existing Part 16 decision made by the FAA where exactly this happened. And they said that all three of those kinds of operations are different. They're all access restrictions, and they consider it separately. So the FAA's position is that the 1984, in the 1984 agreement, we negotiated limits on two kinds of operations and not on the third, and we can't simply add the third much as we would all like to. Um, and so that's the reason that we don't just take that relatively simple step to reduce impacts as opposed to the proposal that's before you tonight, which, I mean, Mr. Golden, Mr. Pastuccia may want to chime in, but I don't think anyone on staff sees this as a wholesale solution to problems. We see it as one thing that we can try to find out if it helps reduce adverse airport impacts. And that's why it's presented to you solely as a short-term test, so that we can evaluate whether it's helpful or not. Finally, I know I'm talking a lot, but I know this is an important subject to, to everyone. Finally, staff does, cons does continue to explore and will aggressively keep exploring all possible avenues for, for eliminating impacts. This is, it's just that we aren't we don't see the benefit to trying to put all our eggs in one basket, especially when none of the baskets look certain to hold very many eggs. So we're trying to bring forward to you and try out every option that we can think of to try to limit impacts. Mr. Gould, did you have anything you wanted to add to that? Thank you. Well, let me go back to safety, because that's really what has made my mind up here. Um, we currently have flight schools taking off over the densest neighborhood around any airport in Southern California. Now, flight school operations are not popular with anybody. We got letters from other airports indicating they're not thrilled at the idea that our flight schools might be doing takeoffs and landings at their airport. 
However, especially in the case of an airport like Camarillo, the difference is those operations would now be happening over far less populated areas, particularly right close to the runway. Sure, I'd love not to give this $90,000 to the flight schools, essentially paying them to go away for a while. I would love to use this money instead for social services programs or something else in the city. But if I saved that money and then gave it to something else and one of those flight school planes had a problem and landed on somebody's home, that would be blood money. And I, I can't see doing that. I see here the opportunity to significantly, I don't know if it's a tremendous amount, but significantly improve the safety around that airport for a while and to see if it has an impact. And I believe that is worth doing, and I will move the staff recommendation. I'll second it. Uh, and uh, I'm next in the queue. Uh, uh, Ms. Smoothry, did you want to address that? Can I just chime in on one point that maybe one of you is going to raise and maybe you won't? Um, we, we would suggest, I guess as a slight modification, that you endorse the staff recommendation with the caveat that if subsequent work by staff suggests that there's any uh, legal hurdle that we need to jump before doing this, we do that. I, I say this because one of the letters that I think we all received today asserted that we were required to do some level of environmental assessment for undertaking that and we need time to evaluate that claim. And then another writing that we received today said that this program was itself a violation of federal law. We don't think so. But if you direct us to go forward with this recommendation, I just want to assure you and the public that we would uh, consider those claims before implementing. And we'd let you know right away, of course. I would never direct staff to do something illegal, so of course, of course I will amend the motion to allow that investigation okay. and amendment if necessary. Great. And, and of course the seconder agrees with that. Um, and that actually answered two of my questions, Ms. Mutri. So uh, let me uh, go on and make a couple of observations. Um, I, I think most everyone on the council uh, recognizes that the airport continues to present a real challenge to the residents throughout the community. And uh, I understand to some extent the sentiment that it would have been nice for the Airport Commission, for example, to have had the opportunity to, to review this program and make comments on it. Unfortunately, they were scheduled to have a meeting last night and uh, couldn't get a quorum. And so they weren't able to look at it. Uh, my concern is that if we wait until we go through our normal sort of Santa Monica public review, we will be waiting a very long time. We like to do lots of public review. And this seems like a, a very uh, efficient way to cut down the number of flights over our city and over our neighborhoods and our neighboring city uh, in, in almost an immediate fashion. And I agree with Councilmember McEwen, it's unfortunate it's going to cost us some money. Uh, but to me, the cost, I don't view the cost of the money as, oh, we're giving money to the flight schools, although that is, in fact, what's happening. But we are paying this money in order to improve the situation in the skies above Santa Monica and Mar Vista and Venice. And if that means paying the flight schools to go away and try doing a pilot program and seeing if that has a significant effect, I think it's money well spent. We have been... Uh, stymied in many ways and looking for ways to try and alleviate the effects on the neighborhood of, of our residents and our neighboring residents. And here we've come up with one. It may not be the perfect solution. It probably isn't the perfect solution, but it is part of a larger picture. We are, we're trying to get the low-hanging fruit. It's going to be one of the arrows in our quiver. I'll come up with some other uh, cliches in a moment. But I, I really think that this is not meant to be a solution to the problem, but it's a piece that might have an immediate impact on the neighbors, and for that reason I, I support it. I, I think one of the things that really is important to talk about is that it's not the only thing we're, we're working on, as, as staff knows, and certainly I believe as the community should be aware, um, looking at the, the silencing mechanisms that may or may not be available, looking at other solutions to policies that we can adopt at the airport in the short term before 2015, and then obviously, you know, how we uh, deal with the airport and our relationship with the FAA as of 2015. So while I view this as something as an imperfect 
a, a solution, a, an imperfect act, if you will. I think it is an act that it's important for us to take. I think we should begin the pilot program. I don't think beginning the pilot program is any sort of impediment to having the airport commission consider the program when they do have a quorum and can reconvene. And I certainly think that the part of the staff recommendation that requires a report back to city council and establishment of criteria should also include a report back to the airport commission on the effects of the program as well. And I don't think that needs to be a specific part of the motion because I think that's what we naturally would do. Um, so, so I am going to support it. I'm very interested to hear what the results are. Uh, it is only weekends and holidays, but our uh, information gathering so far has been that those are the times when our, our residents and again our neighbors are, are most, most bothered by the uh, airport traffic. So if, if it has any ameliorative effect, I'm in favor of it even though it comes at a cost. Uh, Ms. O'Connor. Right, I have mixed feelings about this, I have to say, but because it is a test program, it's a program of limited duration, I, I will be supporting it. And in terms of the airport commission, I kind of land, end up in the same area place where, yes, it would have been nice that they were able to have reviewed this, but again, it's a test program, and along the way, they will be included, and, and I, I look to them also to, as we get data back about how it's working or not, that they will be there to help comment, analyze, and uh, and provide feedback on that. So again, it's it's a test program. We're trying a variety of options. We don't know what the outcomes will be, but we will we don't know now, but we will have some information and data about whether this is a technique, whether this works or not. Or do we go in a totally different direction? So, uh, and, I, and I think too, we will get more information about what kind of, if there is any environmental review or legal constraints to doing it. And that's part of the process of trying these test programs. Great, thank you. Dr. Holbrook? This is uh, one of the most interesting things in 20 years that I've uh, discussions I've been involved in because to date not one single person I received email from or talked to, including the leadership of the different groups around the airport, wants us to do this. Some have said, "Well, let's think about it, let's study it, let's have meetings about it." Everybody else has said, "Don't do it." And, just, and, and, and the amazing thing is, is it's difficult to understand why you wouldn't want to try it, because it could only, if only 10 airplanes diverted in six months, there would be 40 landings and takeoffs you wouldn't have in the neighborhood. Just 10 airplanes. And, you know, that number just gets you know, higher and higher if you go. Yet it is peculiar. It is really a peculiar situation that the people just don't want us to do it. Sometimes it's for an emotional basis. We don't like those guys. We don't like what they're doing up there. They're flaunting the rules. And don't pay them because they're, they're just, they sh we don't like them. All the way to, uh, uh, for everything else you can imagine. So I'm, a, I'm just not going to vote for it. It, it. The public that is benefiting from it doesn't want it. And I'm not sure there's a safety issue. I think there's a really big safety issue with with the high-speed jets and the heavier aircraft that are landing and taking off because the air quality that they create is 100 times greater than the little airplanes when they come and go. It's just the noise uh, issue that's, uh, that's I think, a real serious problem. So uh, I'm not going to support this, and, and I completely understand if the council wants to do that. Thank you. All right. Any other comments? Ms. Anderson Warren will vote. <clears throat> Councilmember McCune? Yes. Councilmember O'Day? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Davis? Yes. Councilmember Holbrook? No. Councilmember O'Connor? Yes. All right. That passes four to one. D just a minute, please. Oh. I need to ask the city attorney oh. whether or not we had enough votes to make the to approve the allocation for the experiment. Just ask Mr. Pastuccia if he was looking for an appropriation, and I think you were, right? So, so, so we don't have sufficient votes then no. to do the appropriation. Why don't you make a motion to continue it? All right. Uh, I will move that we continue the item to uh, another council meeting in July. Second. 
I think we can do that on a voice vote. Can we? Yeah. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Great. All right, then we'll be bringing it back. Madam Mayor, the good news is that the city's auditor has just arrived. <laughs>